We are moving on to the phrase or the ayah, the second ayah of Surah Al-Ikhlas, Allahu Samad. Uh, we're going to first look at a basic definition of uh, As-Samad. As-Samad al ay al-Kafi. Uh, As-Samad is the one who is enough. Al-Ladhi yarji'una ilayhi idha ahtajuhu. The one who they return to whenever they have a need of him. Huwa al-Ladhi yakfihim. He is the one who is enough for them. Wa yasuddu hajatihim wa as'ilatahum. Al-Ladhi yasmiduna ilayhi. And he is the one who fulfills all of their needs and their question, answers all of their questions. The ones that they attribute to him or turn to him with عند الحاجة, at the time of need. هذا معنى الصمد. This is the meaning of صمد في اللغة. صمد إليه أي توجه إليه. And linguistically speaking, when you use the word صمد as a verb, it means to turn attention towards someone. وطلب منه الحاجة or to demand from them the fulfillment of a need. المصمود إليه هو السيد. المتوجه إليه. المصمود is the the word مصمود is actually what صمد implies. Is the one to whom people turn in time of need. Another meaning. This, so that's one meaning I'd like you to remember. Samad, one you turn to in time of need. The second meaning. Samada ilayhi ay qasadahu. The second verbal meaning is when you make someone your goal, that you aspire to reach them, or you aspire to please them, or you aspire to attain them, etc., etc. When you attribute someone as your goal, they become a samad. So Allah is saying that He is the one we turn to in need, and He's also calling Himself the ultimate goal. He is the goal of what we do. And of course, this is one of the reasons this is called Surah Al-Ikhlas. Because sincerity, ikhlas, is when we do things and the goal of it is always Allah Azza wa Jal. So that's included in the meaning of a samad. وَالصَّمَدْ أَيْضًا الْغَنِي الَّذِي لَيْسَ فَوْقَهُ أَحَد uh, One of the meanings of samad also is the one who is not in need of anyone else and no one can overpower them or be above them in status or in, uh, in any attribute. الَّذِي لَا عِبَ فِيهِ The one who has no, uh, uh, no blemishes or no faults in him. مِنَ الرِّجَالِ الَّذِي لَيْسَ فَوْقَهُ أَحَد It's used also, for, in, liter- in Arabic literature, it's used for a person also, the one who cannot be overcome. Meaning can't be overcome in battle, you can't outdo them in business, or in their leadership, or in their eloquence, then they're also called a fixture, a samad. Okay, so this is from a linguistic uh, point of view. Additionally, Mufassirun comment, a samad implies عَظِيمُ الْجَلَالَةِ That's one thing, that he's, he's incredible and great in terms of his glory. الدائم الخالد it's the ever, he's the everlasting المقصود لقضاء الحجب we talked about that the one who is turned to to fulfill needs this this is important now شيء صمد the word صمد is used as an adjective also something that is صمد مصمت لا جوف فيه أو جوف له it is uh, referred to as something that is solid with no holes or emptiness inside something that is through and through pure one thing, like a pure brick of gold could be samad. Or a pure a boulder with no possibility of any air or water getting in could also be called, an attribute of it could be samad. Meaning something absolute and concrete without any flaw. Right? That's, that's one of the meanings. And this meaning is important to appreciate because we give Allah Azza wa names. And a name is like the shell. It's the outside. But then Allah Azza wa Jal actually manifests and fulfills every one of the names we give Him. Is it possible that you give someone a name like noble? That's what you call them on the outside, but on the inside they're really not that noble. <laughs> but when we call Allah any name, now because He is a samad He fulfills that name in the absolute sense. Grammatically speaking, Allah samad plays a very interesting role in the surah. One grammatical explanation of Allah Samad is that it is al-badal, it is a replacement of the original subject of the sentence, Allah. Meaning, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدُ أَحَدْ It's replacing the mubtada, the original mubtada, and this is badal also. Okay? In other words, Allah the Absolute is the only one for which there can be no second. So it's further explaining that first sentence. The other, the way, the way it's understood is that it's going further from where it began and it's repeating the word Allah again because Allah is giving Himself descriptions that the Arabs who talked about Allah did not give Him. They would also say Allah created, they would also say Allah is merciful. What they wouldn't say is Ahad or Samad. So He's mentioning Allah, Ahad. Allah, As-Samad. And As-Samad has Alif Lam in it, which is for absolute. 
istighraq. You know, it's absolutely in in no way, shape, or form is there anything left in his you know uh, in the word samad. And, and the basic basic meaning of samad that gets repeated by mufassirun over and over again, in addition to what we just discussed, the one who everyone needs and needs no one himself. That is a samad. One of the interesting commentaries by Al Biqai rahimahullah in his tafsir Nafmu Durar fi Tanasub al Ayati wa Sur, commenting on the previous surah, which was the previous surah, Surat Lahab. Surat Lahab talked about a person who thinks he needs no one. He can, everybody needs him because he was the treasurer. Who are we talking about? Abu Lahab. Now you should know the only one that is actually as Samad is Allah Azza wa Jal. So there's this contrast. Well, now that the, you know, the, the, his filthy. A self-absorbed concept Because he was self-absorbed His ilah was himself He worshipped himself He didn't even worship any other religion And you have to remember what he said When the messenger invited him to the religion You know there's one time he cursed the messenger himself We reminded ourselves May you be cursed May your hand, you be destroyed Did you gather us for this But this other time he cursed the religion And when he cursed the religion What was his, uh, what was his criticism deen and akuna sawa, you know, liha'ula, I will become equal to these people? <laughs> you want me to accept that religion? Where I will have an equal? Because he thinks he has no equal. Now Allah is teaching us the only one who has no equal is He. He's the only one absolute, and He's the only one that is ahad.